Hello and welcome to the Design for Learning tutorial on using Adobe Connect as a presenter. Today we'll learn about a few basic concepts like how to record, chat, control audio and video, as well as share screens. This tutorial represents lessons learned in teacher practice sessions. These were live, play in the sandbox sessions that allowed students to try meeting technology together in a safe space before teaching real students. Each group had an experienced moderator, and this tutorial represents the most common tools and tips we came across in all of our sessions. Adobe Connect is evolving software and highly customizable. Keep in mind that what you see here may not exactly match your own instance of the software, and the tools are changing all the time. First things first, before you even log into your meeting room, make sure you do the technical checks. Depending on how you access your meeting rooms, you may just see a link for help, or you may see a technical checks area that directs you to a virtual auditorium check. Either way, Adobe will run diagnostics on your computer and let you know whether your connection speeds and software will support using Adobe Connect fully. The most common error is for the Adobe Connect add-in, which you will need for interactive and multimedia content to load and work smoothly. Install the add-in now and you'll have a much easier time in the meeting once you log in. This is a meeting room. When you log into it, the Collaborate layout is your default room setup. As you can see, it is fairly comprehensive and complex, placing many different options at your fingertips. We need to get you ready to present which means ensuring that you can connect your sound and maybe your webcam. To turn on your microphone to speak, click on the microphone icon in the top menu bar. It will be white when it's off and green when it's on. To turn on your webcam, click the webcam icon just to the right of the microphone icon. It will also turn green when active. This is what your screen will look like with the webcam on. There's a preview of what shows in your webcam in the upper right-hand pod. Keep in mind that this is just a preview. You'll need to choose to share your webcam for anyone else to see you. Share your webcam by clicking Start Sharing. When your webcam is live, the webcam pod in the upper right-hand corner looks like this. To stop sharing or change the viewing settings of your webcam, use the buttons at the top of the webcam pod. Before we go further, you need to know more about setting up audio preferences for both yourself and your attendees. You'll want to go through the audio setup wizard every time you present to ensure that you can be heard, which is the most important part. Click the drop-down menu under Meeting and select the audio setup wizard. This will help you choose the best settings, particularly the correct microphones and speakers for yourself to hear and be heard. Always do this prior to starting your meeting to ensure a smooth presentation. Other settings you might consider are under the audio drop-down menu. You can enable microphone rights for participants if you like, and single speaker mode, which allows only one person to talk at a time. These settings are quick and easy to select and have check marks to indicate their status. If you want to explore more audio and video settings, you'll need to click on the Audio Conference Settings. Once you click Audio Conference Settings, a large pop-up displays over your screen and gives you lots of options to play with. We're going to go over just a few that are the most common for a successful presentation. First, under the audio conference, you can set the default settings so that participants may or may not use their microphone. For the attendees pod, you can disable the feature that allows participants to raise their hand when they have questions. Usually you'll want to leave that feature enabled so participants can interact with you, but if you're presenting to a very large group, it may be best to turn it off. Under whiteboard, you can choose whether participants are able to create alongside you on the whiteboard 
as well as whether or not they can export the whiteboard for use later. Remember that back in our meeting room with the default Collaborate layout, the whiteboard pod is automatically present and shared. There are other easy access pods in the meeting room, like the attendees pod, where you'll control the roles of your participants and how they work together. Here's the attendees pod up close. Right now there's no one else in the meeting with me, but when you're presenting to others, their names will show under participants. As the host, you have the ability to change a participant's role to presenter. This is useful if you want someone else to take over the presentation, or if you want them to share their screen with the group. You can also mute attendees if you need to. This is especially useful as a quick fix if there's a lot of background noise because a participant hasn't thought to mute themselves. Click the second icon in the attendees pod to start breakout sessions if you need to. We're not going into detail about breakouts, but if you want to explore this option, this is where you look. The third icon in the attendees pod allows the host to monitor participant interaction. It groups together raised hands and responses to questions or polls that were distributed during the session. Enough about the attendees pod. There are more neat features in the meeting room that you need to know about. First, you can upload your presentation files. We strongly recommend that you upload files prior to the meeting. It can take a while for content to load, and there are some formats Adobe Connect cannot show, so you'll want to get set up ahead of time. Click on Upload File in the Files pod to begin. Clicking Upload opens a pop-up menu that allows you to upload files. Click Browse My Computer to select your files. Once the file has uploaded, click the OK button to return to the meeting room. You can see the file is uploaded to the meeting room and available for download by participants. In the chat pod, you and participants can type messages. This is a great way for those without a microphone to communicate, and they can communicate privately too, with you or anyone else. In the upper right-hand corner of the chat pod is an icon you can click to open the chat settings menu. You can change all sorts of preferences here, like text color or size. It isn't necessary to adjust these settings to get chat to work, but you can play with them to get a better or more fun experience for you. What if you want to record a meeting? You can do this by clicking the Meeting drop-down button again. Select Record Meeting. This will open another pop-up screen where you add a title for the recording and, if you'd like to, provide a quick summary. Once you press OK on the pop-up screen, you'll return to the meeting room with one big difference. In the upper right-hand corner of the meeting room, you'll see a red dot that means you're currently recording. Use this button to pause or stop recording as well. What if you want to share your screen? Go to the Pods menu, choose Share, and then select Share again. Remember the whiteboard from the default screen? You can always check here to make sure that sharing the whiteboard is enabled. You can tell this one is because it has a check mark. Once you click Share, a new pod will open in your meeting room. Click on Share My Screen. This time, when I click Share My Screen, I get a small warning about needing to install the Adobe Connect add-in on my computer. Even if you ran technical checks, it's possible to see pop-ups like this when using Adobe Connect, especially for the first time. You'll need to click Yes to install the add-in so you can use interactive and multimedia content. This image gives you an idea of what the warning looks like in case you come across it. Usually the add-in will install quickly. It took less than 30 seconds for me this time. But back to sharing screens. If you have dual monitors, you'll be given the option to choose which screen to share. Make a selection if you need to, then click Share. 
Once you click Share, you'll see the screen making a couple seconds of adjustments and then the meeting room will minimize into a small window in the lower corner of your monitor. From here, you'll still have control of the most important features of the meeting, like chat and sound, but they're minimized so you can take advantage of the full screen. You can't see the meeting room anymore, but it's still there and the participants can see you. To preview what you are sharing, click on the computer icon on the small meeting window. Once you share this option, you'll have the further option to stop sharing or pause and annotate. If you choose to pause and annotate, your screen adjusts automatically. You can type, draw, and otherwise mark up the screen from the moment that you click. There are many more options and controls available for you to customize your Adobe Connect meeting. All I can say is get in there, play around, and have fun. Our project partners include IMLS, SCRLC, ESLN, and the iSchool at SU. Design for Learning has been made possible by a grant from the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services.